everybody. Happy Sunday. Sebelum kita masuk dalam ibadah pada pagi hari ini, marilah kita menyiapkan hati dan pikiran kita dengan berdoa secara pribadi. Before we start our service, let us quiet our hearts before the presence of God. diambil dari Mazmur pasal yang ke-107 ayat 31 dan 32. A call to worship is taken from Psalm 107 verse 31 and 32. Marilah kita bangkit berdiri untuk mendengarkannya. Please stand and hearken to the call to worship. Dari Mazmur 107 ayat 31 dan 32. Demikian firman Tuhan. Biarlah mereka bersyukur kepada Tuhan karena kasih setianya, karena perbuatan-perbuatannya yang ajaib terhadap anak-anak manusia. Biarlah mereka mendidikkan dia dalam jemaat umat itu dan memuji-muji dia dalam majelis para tua-tua. Marilah kita nyanyikan penghormatan kita kepada Tuhan Yesus Kristus lebih dalam ku menyembah. Let's glorify and honor our Lord Jesus.
Let's lift up our prayer of thanksgiving. Bapa kami yang di surga, terima kasih atas hari yang indah ini. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Terima kasih atas berkat yang melimpah yang sudah engkau berikan bagi kami. Thank you for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon us. Terima kasih atas anugerah dan belas kasihanmu yang membimbing kami bahkan dalam masa yang sukar. Thank you for your endless grace and mercy which guide us through even the most difficult times. Terima kasih atas anugerah keselamatan, penyertaanmu, perlindunganmu, dan damai sejahtera yang kau berikan di hati kami. Thank you for the gift of salvation, your provision and protection, the peace and joy you have placed in our hearts. Kami berdoa, kiranya kami terus menyatakan rasa syukur kami melalui perkataan dan perbuatan. We pray that we may always show our gratitude through our words and actions. Di dalam nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus kami berdoa. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Silakan duduk. Marilah kita dengarkan berita pengharapan yang diambil dari Nahum pasal yang pertama ayat yang ketujuh. Let us listen to the message of hope taken from Nahum 1 verse 7. Demikian firman Tuhan. Tuhan itu baik. Ia adalah tempat pengungsian pada waktu kesusahan. Ia mengenal orang-orang yang berlindung kepadanya. Puji Tuhan. Marilah kita naikkan syukur kepada Yesus Tuhan kita dengan menyanyikan lagu Kecaplah dan Lihatlah. Let's sing this song, Song of Thanksgiving, Taste and See. Yang ke-14 
that message of forgiveness is taken from Proverbs 28, verse 14. Demikian firman Tuhan. Berbahagialah orang yang senantiasa takut akan Tuhan, tetapi orang yang mengeraskan hatinya akan jatuh ke dalam malam petaka. Malah kita senantiasa takut akan Tuhan. Dan kita naikkan kucian ini penyembahan kita kepada Tuhan. Marilah kita bangkit berdiri. Let's stand as we worship Him and sing. There is something about that name.
datang kepada Yesus Tuhan kita untuk mengakui dosa kita dan membawa permohonan kita kepadanya. Let us come to the presence of Jesus to confess our sins and to bring our petitions before Him. Terus saudara kita akan berdoa buat Om Kiat. Om Kiat, Om sekarang ada di rumah sakit terkena pneumonia. We want to take time to pray for our brother Om Kiat Om. He is in the hospital now, suffering from pneumonia. Kita juga mau berdoa memohon penghiburan bagi keluarga Hermawan, keluarga Enge, Cieni, Citra yang ditinggal oleh kakak tercinta mereka, Julia. We also want to pray that God will bring comfort to the Hermawan's family. Um, Julia, the sister of our sister Yeni, yeah, Enge, and Citra passed away on Friday. So may God strengthen them and comfort them all. Sebelumnya, marilah kita pujikan nama Yesus. And before we pray, let us sing the name of Jesus. syukur kepadamu atas kekuatan yang kau berikan kepada kami tak kalah kami tengah lemah we also want to give you thanks for the strength that you gave us in times of weakness ya Bapa, kami juga sekarang berdoa mau juga mengakui bahwa kami orang-orang berdosa we also come before you Father we want to confess that we are sinners Kami sudah tahu kehendakmu, tapi kami tidak selalu melakukannya. We already knew what your will was, but we did not always obey you. Ampuni kami, biarlah darahmu yang kau curahkan di kayu salib membasuh kami kembali. 
So we pray, please forgive us. And may your blood that you have shed on the cross wash us clean. Dan biarlah di hari mendatang kami hidup seturut dengan kehendakmu. And we pray, may in the days to come, we will live in accordance to your will. Bapa, pertama kami juga naikkan syukur kepadamu atas operasi yang berjalan baik buat saudara kami, Kau Yusdar. Lord, we want to give you thanks that the operation, the heart, open heart surgery went well for our brother Yusdar. Biarlah dalam masa pemulihan kau juga terus memberikan kekuatan dan biarlah engkau menyembuhkannya dengan tuntas. We pray may you be with him, that he will have a speedy and good recovery, and that he will be healed, Father. Bapa, kami juga naikkan doa buat Om Kiat yang tengah dirawat di rumah sakit. Kami berdoa, mohon tumpangkanlah tanganmu atasnya dan berilah kepadanya kesembuhan. We pray, Heavenly Father, for Om Kiat who is now in the hospital. May you place your hands upon him and heal him. Kami juga naikkan doa bagi keluarga Hermawan yang tengah berduka kehilangan kakak tercinta mereka, Julia. We also pray, Father, for comfort upon the Hermawan's family who are grieving the loss of their sister, Julia. Pada waktumu, engkau membawanya pulang ke rumahmu dan kami tahu ia sekarang hidup di dalam hadiratmu tanpa sakit. We also know, Father, that he is now with you, living in your presence without pain. Untuk itu kami naikkan syukur kepadamu. For that, Father, we thank you. Bapa, kami juga naikkan doa buat saudara-saudara kami yang lain yang tengah sakit. Kami berdoa buat saudari Herwig. Memohon berilah kekuatan kepadanya sehingga dia tidak merasakan sakit dan terpengaruh oleh pengobatan yang sedang dijalaninya. Lord, now we want to pray for our brothers and sisters who are ill. In particular, we remember Henry, Lord, our sister. May you touch and heal her. May she be strong to endure the effect of the treatment that she is getting. Kami juga berdoa ya Tuhan buat saudari Sandra yang juga setengah mengalami akibat dari pengobatannya biarlah kau memberikan kekuatan kepada Sandra we also lift up our sister Sandra Lord she's also having the effect of the treatment that she's getting we pray may you strengthen her kami naikkan doa pula buat saudara kami Anyau biarlah Tuhan terus kuatkan dan sembuhkan saudara Anyau we lift up our brother Anyau we pray may you continue to touch him, to heal him, and to strengthen him. Kami berdoa buat Stephanie dan Mira. Kami berterima kasih atas kesehatan yang Tuhan berikan dan teruslah kau sembuhkan mereka. We also lift up our sister Stephanie and Mira. We thank you, Father, for the good health that they have been enjoying. We pray may you continue to heal them. Kami juga naikkan doa buat Tante Elvira. Buat saudari Kathleen, kami mohon biarlah Tuhan terus kuatkan, hilangkan sakit penyakit dari tubuh mereka. We pray for Tante Elvir and Kathleen. May you also heal them, that you will also remove all the pain from their body, Lord, and may you keep them strong and healthy. Kami juga naikkan doa buat saudari Andri, buat kau pagi, biarlah kau bersama mereka, Kuatkan mereka, sembuhkan mereka. We pray, Father, for our sister Andri, our brother Pardi. May you also strengthen them and heal them. Kami juga naikkan doa buat Kok Fabian. Ya Tuhan, biarlah Kau jamah dia dan sembuhkan dia. We pray for our brother Fabian. May you continue to touch him and to heal him. Kami juga mengangkat. Papa dari Syafi, Pak Chandra, biarlah engkau bersamanya menumpangkan tangan atasnya dan menyembuhkannya. 
We also pray for Pak Chandra, the father of Shafi in Indonesia. May you touch him. May you lift him up, Lord. May you strengthen him and heal him from his sickness. Bapa, kami berdoa juga buat saudara Stephen, kakak dari Brian, dan juga saudara Stephen yang lain, kakak ipar dari saudara Richard yang dua-dua menderita sakit. Biarlah Tuhan jamah dan sembuhkan mereka. We pray, Father, for Stephen, the brother of Brian, and another Stephen, the brother-in-law of Richard. May you also touch them and heal them from their sicknesses. Bapa, kami juga naikkan doa buat tetangga kami Norma. Biarlah kau terus kuatkan dia dan sembuhkan dia. We pray for our neighbor Norma. May you continue to strengthen her and to heal her. Kami naikkan doa juga buat Om Arthur, buat Pak Gustaf, buat Pak Andreas. Biarlah kau terus berikan kepada mereka kekuatan menjalani perawatan minggu demi minggu. We pray, Father, for Om Arthur, Pak Andreas, Pak Gustaf, who have to undergo treatment week after week. May you grant them strength, Father, that they will be strong to go through the treatment that they need. Bapa dalam surga. Kami juga berdoa buat kami di sini yang mempunyai pergumulan yang tak dapat kami ungkapkan, tapi engkau tahu apa itu. Biarlah engkau tengok kami, engkau ulurkan tangan dan engkau tolong kami. And now we pray, Father, for all of us here who have struggles that we cannot share with others, but you know what they are. We pray, may you look at us. May you extend your hands and help us, Father. Biarlah doa doa kami engkau dengar ya Tuhan, and may you hear all our prayers. Bapa dalam surga, kami juga berdoa buat terus terang kami yang jauh di Indonesia seperti Om Hain, Tante Tina, Om Arif, Tante Bessi. Biarlah engkau bersama mereka. Memberikan kekuatan dan damai sejahtera dalam hati mereka. We pray, Father, for our friends who are far away, like Om Hain, Tante Tina, Om Arif, Tante Bessi. May you be with them in a special way. May you grant them peace and joy in their hearts. Bapa, sekarang kami hendak mendengar firmanmu yang akan disampaikan oleh hambaMu, Pendeta Steve. Biarlah Engkau berkenan berbicara kepada kami. Now we want to listen to your word. Will be delivered by your servant, Master Steve. May you speak to us, Father. Di dalam nama Tuhan kami, Yesus Kristus, kami berdoa in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. We all pray. Amen. Master Steve. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Memang di dalam kehidupan ini cukup jelas ada yang mudah dan ada yang susah. Yeah. Wouldn't you say just as we think about our life, it's clear that there's things that are really easy and really difficult. Ada yang baik, ada yang kurang baik, good and bad. Ada yang suka dan ada yang I was hoping you'd say duka, <laughs> right? Because we have suka and we have duka, and and kalau kita kurang alami hal yang kurang baik atau yang duka atau tantangan atau yang susah, ingatlah aja doa Pastor Paul tadi. Wah, orang ini yang sakit, orang ini, orang ini, orang ini, right? Just think with me about Pastor Paul's prayer earlier. A person after person after person after person that he was praying for. When I was sitting there uh, listening to him pray, 
I had to start. Waduh, kalau doa itu full time job, right? There's always so much going on. Selalu ada yang merasa sakit, sakit dalam badan atau sakit hati, right? There's always pain, whether it be physical pain or suffering, or whether it be emotional pain or emotional suffering. Life is like that, betul? So we agree. Ya, walaupun kita lebih suka yang menyenangkan, kita lebih suka yang suka enggak duka, right? That's just how life is. I like the the nice times, the happy times, the easy times a whole lot better than I like the rough times and the sad times. Tetapi ada banyak sekali nasihat di dalam firman Allah bagaimana kita menghadapi hal-hal yang sulit. There's so much advice, there's so much encouragement, there's so much laid out in the Word of God for how you and I should face those times that are hard. Lalu hari ini kita akan melihat uh, pengalaman Rasul Paulus. Today we're going to look at the example of the Apostle Paul dan apakah yang dia katakan tentang pengalaman-pengalaman seperti itu. So we're going to see what he has to say about experiences like that And I'm going to jump right into the Word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Lalu kita akan membaca dari 2 Corinthians 12 ayat 7 sampai 10 yang berbunyi. Dan supaya aku jangan meninggikan diri karena penyataan-penyataan yang luar biasa itu, maka aku diberi suatu duri di dalam dagingku, yaitu seorang utusan iblis untuk mengocok aku. Supaya aku jangan meninggikan diri. Tentang hal itu, aku sudah tiga kali berseru kepada Tuhan. Supaya utusan iblis itu mundur daripadaku. Tetapi jawab Tuhan kepadaku. Cukuplah kasih karuniaku bagimu. Sebab justru dalam kelemahanlah kuasaku menjadi sempurna. Sebab itu terlebih suka aku bermega atas kelemahanku. Supaya kuasa Kristus turun mengangun aku. Karena itu aku senang dan rela di dalam kelemahan, di dalam siksaan, di dalam kesukaran, di dalam penganiayaan, dan kesesakan oleh karena Kristus. Sebab jika aku lemah, maka aku kuat. In English it says this, Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. Because when I am weak, then I am strong. Tapi yang sulit dalam kehidupan ini, saya begitu suka merasa lemah. Saya begitu suka menderita. Right? Like that's the problem though in life. Do you like to feel weak? Do you like it when you suffer? Tidak begitu enak. Right? It's not good. It's not enjoyable. But here we see Paul, saya lebih suka pengalaman-pengalaman seperti itu. So Paul says here, I actually like these types of experiences more. But why? Now, waktu saya baru menikah, kami pindah dari Los Angeles ke daerah Sacramento. So when, when I first got married, myself and my wife Patty, we moved from LA to Sacramento. Dan kami mencari pekerjaan baru dan dapat. Dan saya udah mulai kerja. Beberapa minggu kemudian, ibu pati dapat pekerjaan baru. So when we moved up north, we both got new jobs. And I got my job a little sooner, and then my wife Patty got her job. Saya mau pulang kerja. Hari itu hari pertama dia mulai kerja di sekolah. Dan waktu saya mau pulang kerja, saya mampir di toko bunga. So when Patty had her first day of school, I was on my way home from work, and I said, you know what? I want to get her something special. Because that's the type of guy I am. Are there any guys? Would you do that for your wives? Yeah, I know you would. Yeah. The wives are like, no, he wouldn't. Right? 
Pada mampir di toko bunga ini dan saya masuk Saya mau beli bunga Karena hari itu hari khusus Hari pertama dia kerja Lalu saya harus dapat bunga yang khusus juga right? So because it was a special day It was her first day of work I had to do something nice I wanted to get something that encouraged her And I thought what type of flower should I get her That was also a special flower What do you think? A rose But you know what a rose is? Yeah, in Spanish, that's rice. <laughs> But you're right. So I said, Adu, so I have to believe Sepua Bunga Mawa. I have to buy a rose because it's special, because I love her. And Harus Mera, right? It has to be red because I love her. And all of these things. And I walked in and I said, Adu, Wang Sanga Banya. Yeah, I don't have a lot of money. So I brought my wallet. Di dalam mobil saya ada like small container dengan semua wang logam. Have you have those like a little container in your car with all of the coins? I ambil semua wang logam and I masuk. So I took all the money I had, which wasn't a lot. I went into the store and there was a man there. And I said, hello, saya mau satu bunga mawar. Oh, boleh pak. Berapa harganya pak? Right? And so I told him I wanted a rose. And they had them, and he asked, how much was it? And he said, nine dollar, six dollars. And I said, ah, aduh, dia enggak cukup. Terima kasih, pa, mari, right? And so I said, thank you, and I started to leave. And he said, hey, 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 tunggu, tunggu dulu, just wait. Mengapa you mau bunga mawar? Why do you want a rose? I said, oh, karena hari ini, hari pertama, This is the first day that my wife's working. And he said, oh, so it's a special day. I said, yeah, I hope so. It's a special day. And I wanted to give her something to celebrate. And he said, ah, karena hari ini khusus, sebenarnya hari ini ada harga khusus untuk bunga mawar. Right? Because today's a special day. We have a special price for roses. Right? I said, oh, how much are the roses? And he said, Bapa punya berapa? <laughs> How much do you have? And I book a dompet ku at a dua dollar. Saya at the dua, saya ambil wang loga mulai menghitung. Lima puluh tujuh sen. Right? So I took all the money I had, two dollars and fifty-seven cents. I thought, ya yeah, enggak cukup. Karena satu bunga itu enam dollar, belum termasuk pajak. Right? No tax yet, and it's already six dollars. I only have two dollars and fifty-seven cents. And he says, Pak, sebenarnya hari ini, sekarang, satu bunga mawar itu dua dollar lima puluh tujuh cent. So just the day the roses are two dollars and fifty-seven cents. I said, Pak, maaf, sudah termasuk pajak, right? <laughs> and he says, yes, with tax. And I said, oh, thank you so much. I'll take one. Dan dia bungkus dengan baik dan saya bawa pulang dan bisa kasih bunga mawar sama kekasihku ibu parti and said happy first day of work because it's something special right I mean do you like it when you get flowers anybody yes. oh good I brought some flowers yeah let me see though you know flowers can also be agak bahaya juga ya yeah Let's see. I think that's enough. Did you know? Oh, oh. oh no. Oh no. That's what type of flower Siki will give you. Oh. Thank you for serving. Oh. Be, be careful. Be close. Oh, hey. Are you going to see Suka? Oh, do a rose for rose. <laughs> Now, mudah-mudahan harapan saya kalau ibu pati pulang dan saya bisa kasih bunga itu supaya dia senang, right? Because most people like flowers, right? You see them and you go, ah, oh, right? Or you you get a flower and you mint you and you go. Ah, harum, right? And you smell it and it smells so nice. Because that's what roses are like. 
right? And that was my whole goal. But I want you to think, bagaimana kalau saya pulang dulu dan saya buka bungkusan semuanya dan saya ambil bunga mawar ini. And I went home, I got home before Ibu Pati and I said, you know what, I need to make the rose extra special. And I start trimming. Ah. Oh yeah. Ini memang sangat indah sekarang. Right? What do you think if this is so beautiful? And then Ibu Pati came home and I said, Sayang, honey, I love you. I hope it was a good day of work. <laughs> Right? Why? It's still a rose. But the man kind of dikasi this instead of that. Even baru dari Indonesia betul. Here. So if you don't know Eben, that's Pastor Paulin Ibusati's son, and his wife is Yamima, and Yamima masih di Indo. Mau pulang minggu depan? Oh, hari ini. Oh, this is your special day, Evan. <laughs> oh, satu lagi. For your mama, okay? Coba membayangkan kalau Yunima keluar dari imigrasi di LAX ya, Ingin melihat suaminya, she's coming out of the corridor at LAX She wants to see her husband and Evan is there going Nima, Nima, Mo, sayang, sayang, right? And they're looking at each other and she runs and he holds out the stems And she said, huh? Right? Because who likes the stems? Siapa yang suka duri? Enggak ada yang suka, right? Nobody likes the thorns. It's worthless. Kalau melihat rose seperti itu di dalam buku saat ini, pasti langsung dibuang, right? So if you open this up and that's what was inside, wouldn't you throw those away and keep the ones that are good? Because the ones that are good are indah, harum, ada, ada maksudnya juga. Right? They have, they smell good, they look good, but they also have a meaning, right? Like, I love you, or you're my friend, or I care about you. So if you get that, that's what it communicates. Tetapi, kalau you menerima this, what in the world does it communicate? Yang lucu juga sebenarnya, waktu saya ke toko untuk mencari bunga mawar ini, susah sekali mencari bunga tanpa durian. Right? Like, it was really hard to even find roses that had thorns. Why? Karma cannot do sakit. Right? If you get hit by the thorn, if it scratches you, it's going to hurt. So, to be baik, dipotong dulu, supaya orang mau beli. Right? So, you even cut the thorns back so that people will buy them because nobody likes thorns. They can hurt you. Lalu bagaimana kita dengan kehidupan ini? Saya jauh lebih suka-suka daripada duka. Saya lebih suka yang muda daripada suka yang susah. Right? Like, I like happy things. I like enjoyable things. I like things that smell good. I like things that feel good. Bagaimana kalau lagi menderita sesuatu? Bagaimana kalau lagi susah? Bagaimana kita berdoa? Tuhan, tolong. Tolong ambil inilah. Right? Like, what if you're experiencing something painful, something difficult, something that's hard? How do we even pray to God? God, take this thing away. Give me something that's nicer, that's easier, that's more enjoyable, that's more beautiful. You can do it, God. Kalau di dalam perikop ini di 2 Korintus 12, kita dapat banyak nasihat dari Paulus. Bagaimana saat kita menghadapi duri di, depan, di, di dalam kehidupan daripada bunga. So actually, this passage is so beautiful because it's advice from Paul about what do you do in life when you actually get thorns and not flowers. Nah, kalau orang membaca 
perkop ini biasanya satu pertanyaan yang selalu muncul apakah dori itu so usually when people think about this passage one of the first questions that comes up is what's the thorn enggak jelas but i hope you could agree with me enggak begitu penting apakah dori itu it's not really that important what the thorn is yang lebih penting apakah yang reaksi paulus terhadap tentang dori itu So really the more important thing is what was Paul's reaction to this thorn. Mungkin ya semua orang ahli Alkitab dan sebagainya enggak tahu. Mereka setuju, tidak tahu. Right? They all agree that they don't know what it is. Uh, ada yang menyampaikan kemungkinan sesuatu fisik atau jasmani, right? So sometimes people say it's something physical, something in your body that you just have to live with and tahan. And hold on. Ada yang mungkin menyampaikan kemungkinan dengan emosi atau dengan sesuatu mental atau sesuatu kayak hubungan yang susah, right? So maybe it's something mental, maybe it's something emotional, maybe it's it's a difficult relationship. I don't know, but it's not that important for you to know. I think. Tapi kalau you ingin tahu apakah duri itu satu petunjuk dari perjanjian lama. Ditemukan di dalam There it is Bilangan 33 Ayat 55 Yang berbunyi Tetapi jika kamu tidak menghalu Penduduk negeri itu dari depanmu Maka orang-orang yang kamu tinggalkan Hidup dari mereka Akan menjadi seperti selumbar Di matamu Dan seperti duri Yang menusuk lambungmu dan mereka akan menyesatkan kamu di negeri yang kamu diami itu. In English it says this, maybe this is a clue of what Paul's talking about. But if you fail to drive out the people who live in the land, those people who remain will become like splinters in your eyes and thorns in your side, and they will harass you in the land where you live. Tetapi jelas, walaupun mental, emotional, hubungan, atau fisik, among duri selalu ada, right? So whether it's physical or mental, emotional relationship, there's always difficulties that feel like a duri, like a thorn scratching us and hurting us. And usually if we hurt, we want to leave. We want to fix it, right? We want to change it because who likes hurting? Sangat suka. Duka. Suka suka. But that's not So what do we do? Lalu sebenarnya di dalam perkop ini, saya berharap kita bisa lihat apakah yang Paulus lakukan dan pelajari oleh karena duri ini. So we can see today what did Paul do and what did he learn because of this thorn. Karena jelas dia tidak mau. Dan jelas juga Tuhan menjawab. Lalu kita dapat melihat percakapan itu di dalam ayat 8 dan 9. So what's clear about this experience that Paul had is he didn't want it and he asked God to take it away. And God actually answered him and told him what he would do. In verse 8 and 9 it says this. Tentang hal itu, yaitu duri, aku sudah tiga kali berseru kepada Tuhan supaya utusan iblis itu mundur daripada ku. Tetapi jawab Tuhan kepadaku, cukuplah kasih karunia ku bagimu. Sebab justru dalam kelemahanlah kuasa ku menjadi sempurna. In English, it says this, when they had this conversation of Paul asking for the thorn to be taken away. Three different times, I begged the Lord to take it away. But each time God said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Perhatilah. Perhatikanlah, saudara-saudara, Tuhan tidak menjawab tidak. Tuhan tidak menjawab ya. Right? So pay attention and focus on the fact that God actually didn't say no, I will not take it away. He didn't say, okay, I'll take it away. He just said, my grace is enough. My power will be experienced in weakness. So that's all that God gave him to go on. Tetapi saran yang kita dapat dia harus bertahan dan hidup dengan duri ini. But the feeling is that he just had to go through it. He had to hang in there and keep moving ahead with this thorn, whatever it was, in his flesh, probably not physically, but bothering him and making life difficult. 
Dan jelas kita semua ada hal di dalam kehidupan yang merasa seperti duri. The one that came to my mind, uh, I'm going to tell the story in English because I don't want it to be too long going back and forth to Indonesian English. I hope that's okay. Uh, but when I was young in my life as a pastor serving in a church, I served in a really big church up by Sacramento. And one of my responsibilities was the ministry to newlyweds, people who had just been married. Myself and Patty had just gotten married, and there was other people in the church who were newly married. So we formed a ministry to those couples. And in that, that ministry grew, and couples were coming, and we thought, let's go on a mission trip. Let's go to Mexico and serve, because we had a ministry we partnered with in Mexico. Everybody thought it was a great idea. We had seven couples who wanted to go, and we contacted the ministry in Mexico. They told us what we could do. Everybody was excited, and we started to plan. As we were planning and getting ready and praying and talking and buying all the supplies, one of the wives called me and said, can I talk with you? I said, sure, what's up? She said, I think we really want to go. And they actually had a daughter already, so their daughter was going to come. But could we drive ourselves? And that's up by Sacramento, right? So it's driving all the way to San Diego and then driving across the border into Mexico, about another hour or two into Mexico. And I said, why would you want to drive yourself? She said, it's sort of personal, but I would just feel a lot more comfortable if we had our car there. And I came back with other reasons why maybe it wasn't the best idea, but in the van ride, you'll get to know people better, we'll joke, we'll laugh, we'll play games. When we get to Mexico, we're sharing a, room, a, a house, but one big room with bunk beds, and the guys will be on one half and the girls will be on another half, that way you can share the experience with everybody. And she kept saying, no, I think it's better if I drive. And, and I didn't know why, but I said, if you really want to drive, that's up to you. But I hope you'll go with us. She said, okay, then I need one more favor. I said, well, what do you need? Can I use the fax machine at the church? And I was confused why you would need to use the fax machine, but she explained that they were still making payments on their car. So because the lean company still held the title of the car, she needed permission to bring the car to another country. And without that permission, she couldn't cross the border. So I need to fax a letter to New York and ask for permission, and they need to fax it back to me and then when we go across the border, I can show the, the proof in case there's a problem that we have permission to cross the border. So I said, okay. And she faxed it over to New York. And then she went home. And you know, there's a time difference, right, between California and New York. So as the day kept going on, she kept calling me. Pastor Steve, has the letter come yet? And I'd say, no, no letter. Can you check? And I'd ask everybody in the office, no letter. Another 30 minutes. Pastor Steve, has the letter come yet? <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. No letter. This was the last day she could have received the letter because we were leaving the next morning. And then she said, Pastor Steve, I'm just going to come to the church and wait there and hope that the letter comes. And I thought, okay, but when she came, I said, can you explain to me why is this so important? Why is you driving so important? And she looked a little embarrassed, and she said, because then I can sleep in the car. And that was more confusing for me, <laughs> because their car did not look comfortable. That you would rather sleep in a car than sleep in a bed. And you'd rather be alone than with your friends. And then she said, well, I really struggle, Pastor Steve, with, you know, self-image, body image, how people view me. 
And, and I don't know if, uh, how you are, but at night, I really snore loudly. <laughs> and then it made sense. And I said, oh, I snore too. Like snore, that word in English to me is sort of boring. But like the Indonesian word I really like. Right? Like morok. Right? It just makes you feel like you're snoring. Right? And, and then I said, I said, uh, you know, I said her name. And I, I said, I don't think you snore that bad. And then she says, no, Pastor Steve, it's, it's really bad. Like, I don't know if you're married, but does your pasana moro? Right? Like, like uh, in our family, we have a saying, I don't moro, I bernapas kras. <laughs> like, I just breathe heavy. But I didn't think it would be that bad. And she said, no, Pastor Steve, it's really bad. And I'm so embarrassed sleeping in the room with everybody because everybody will hear me snore. And I thought, it can't be that bad. But I said, you know, everybody loves you. Nobody's perfect. It's going to be okay. And she kept saying, no, you don't understand. It's really bad. And if I could just sleep in the car, I wouldn't have to worry about it because I really want to go on this trip. And I really want our daughter to go with us too. So I said, okay, if you want it that badly, fine. But look, it's five o'clock and we don't have the letter yet. And you saw her head drop and she said, oh, I've been praying, I've been asking God. What should we she ask God? Give me the letter. Kalau you sakit, bagaimana berdoa? Tolong sembuhkan aku. Right? Because if you have something that's hard, you don't want to experience it anymore. I understand. It's not that we shouldn't pray to be healed, but whenever we go through a difficulty, what do we pray? God, take the difficulty away. You have the power to do so. This is what I want to happen. And then, at 5.02, the fax machine will I burbuni. Right? And if you know the sound of the facts, it started up and a piece of paper started to come out. Right as she was leaving, and she stopped, and she turned, and she ran back in, and as the paper came out, we looked at it, and jelas, tu surat tentang mobil dia. It was a letter about her car giving her permission to go to Mexico. Wow. She was so happy. Puchi Tuhan, hallelujah. Right? Because God had answered. But in that moment, I don't know why, I just thought God wanted to do something different. Even though he said yes, I don't know why, maybe she hated me, but I thought it would be better for her to still sleep with everybody. So I looked at her and I said, I know God has answered your prayer. And I know you're really embarrassed. But I really think God wants you to go in the van with us. I really think God wants you to sleep in the room with us. I'm not going to force you. But will you just, would you think about it before you take that as a sign from God? And then her head dropped again. And she said, no, you're right. I know God wants me to do this. But I am so scared. And I said, how will you find out about God's power and grace if you don't go through it? The place you'll experience God more will not be in the car. It'll be in the house. The way you'll experience God's power more is not if you're quiet. It's actually if you do snore. So will you go in the van with us? And she said, yes. And her and her husband and her child, we all went in the van together to Mexico. We got to the big room with bunk beds. We hung up a curtain in the middle. We worked hard. And then we went to sleep. And that night, we were all sleeping. And in the morning, I saw Ibu Pati. And I said, how did you sleep? And she said, ah, do. <laughs> 
Moroknya gede banget. Yeah, like, man, somebody was snoring so loud. And I said, really? Yeah, I woke up too. And she goes, I don't think anybody slept last night. Right? And then, guess what? The second night, the same thing. Everybody's so tired. We worked so hard. And we told ourselves, we're so tired that tonight, when we go to sleep, and when this sweet lady, Morok, we won't wake up, because we're so, so tired. But I tell you what, oh Jesus, I've never heard anybody snore louder than this lady in my life. And that night, everybody woke up. And the next day, every now and then, somebody would walk by me, and they'd say, Say what? I want to go home. <laughs> Why? I can't sleep. Have you heard her snore? That's how bad it was. Like, it was really that bad. That's why it felt very personal. Like a duri, taja, sakit benad. Right? It would have really hurt because everybody could have made fun of her about it. And she already struggled with her self-image and confidence. And now there's even more bahan to say stuff about her. But praise the Lord, everybody just encouraged her. That na saat itu, memang di dalam kehidupan orang Kristen, boleh saja, bohong. Right? Like, those are the times where I think God says it's okay to lie. And she wake up and she say, oh my gosh, you guys, is it, I don't know, did I snore that badly? And everybody goes, no. <laughs> That's all it was, right? But oh, it was really hard. Nobody slept well. But at the end of the trip, when we're all sharing on the way home, well, this is what God taught me, this is what God did, this is how I grew, it came to her. And of all the work we did, of all the people we talked to, of all the people we prayed with, the thing she shared is the story about that letter and saying, walaupun saya dapat surat ini, saya harus sebenarnya berjalan melewati kesulitan itu, dan saya mengalami kekuasaan Allah oleh karena itu. That even though I got that letter from the car, I knew God wanted me to just, just go through the, the most terrifying thing that I've done in a long time. But in that moment, facing that challenge, that's where I experience the power of God. So sometimes when we pray, Adu Tuhan Adu Duri, Saya Mabuna. Tuhan, you be sad, Ambil Duri, Supaya Saya Nak Saki. Memang Dia Bisa, right? And so sometimes we pray, God, take away the thorns because I, I don't like them. I like beautiful things, things that are nice, things that are easy, things that smell good. I like people. I like people who are nice. I like people who smell good. Right? But, but sometimes, ada orang seperti ini. Ada pengalaman yang seperti ini. Saya nikmati Tuhan. Tolong ambil. Right? Take the thorn away. That's what Paul prayed. It's okay to pray that. But also God answered. Dia tidak menjawab. Ya, saya akan ambil atau tidak, saya tidak ambil. Tapi yang dia menjawab, kasih karunia ku cukup. Right? Like the thing that he answered wasn't yes or no if he'll take it away from you. What he answered is he'll give you enough grace to go through it. What he answered is, Di dalam saat kamu lemah sekali, baru engkau menemukan kekuasaan ku yang luar biasa. What he said is in the moment that you actually feel the weakest, that is the moment that you will experience God's power. If she went in the car, she would have missed that whole opportunity. If we look at the difficulties of life and just ask God, tolong ambil. Wah, sebenarnya kita nggak dapat kesempatan untuk sesuatu yang lebih indah lagi daripada bunga. So when we ask God to just take things away, sometimes we miss the opportunity for something that's even more beautiful than the flower. 
And we could see this because Paul's perspective changed. La dosa penerbi di dalam rasu Paulus hati dia berubah setelah percakapan ini dengan Tuhan. His heart, his perspective, his outlook changed after this conversation with God. In verse 9 and 10, it says this. Sebab itu, terlebih suka aku bermega atas kelemahanku, supaya kuasa Kristus turun menangui aku. Karena itu, aku senang dan rela di dalam kelemahan. Senang dan rela di dalam siksaan. Senang dan rela di dalam kesukaran. Senang dan rela di dalam penganiayaan dan kesesakan. Senang dan rela hidup dengan duri oleh karena Kristus. Sebab jika aku lemah, maka aku kuat. In English it says this, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest in me. That's why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, I delight in insults, I delight in hardships, I look forward to persecutions, I'm happy about difficulties, because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Lalu Rasul Paulus dapat belajar bahwa sebenarnya kelemahan kita menolong kita. So actually our weaknesses are the very things that help us become like Jesus. That without going through your weakness, you cannot become like Jesus. Right? Remember di dalam Taman Kesemi, dia berdoa, tolong ambil cawan ini. Right? Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, take this cup from me. Right, like take the duri away, but not as I will, tetapi sesuai dengan kehendakmu, what you will. And so what Jesus' will for us isn't that he takes all the duri away, because you will stay weak, but you'll actually think you're strong. Then sebenarnya itu sebuah bohong bahwa kita merasa cukup kuat, padahal kita lemah. Dan waktu kita menghadapi tantangan, Waduh, kita hancur. Dan iman kita juga hancur. So actually the lie is that you can be strong without feeling weak. And then when you do experience something that is incredibly hard, your faith is destroyed because it's never become strong. And so actually the most beautiful thing about life become the challenges and who you can become through the challenges. Untuk teman kami yang mau ke Mexico itu, sekarang dia selalu ada pengalaman itu yang nggak bisa dicuri dari dia. Right, so our friend who went to Mexico, she has that story, that experience that could never be stolen from her, where she said, I met God. Walaupun saya lemah wadu, saya dikuatkan oleh Tuhan. Right, even though I was weak, Oh man, God strengthened me. Wah, walaupun saya takut, saya tahu kasih karunia dia cukup. Right? Even though I was terrified, I found out that His grace was enough. Nah, di dalam kehidupan kita jelas sekali, ada duri dari badan, sakit, keseleo, right? COVID, ada ya kanker. Ya, memang ada banyak dan ada yang juga sangat parah. Ada juga duri dalam kehidupan kita yang, yang emos, emosi yang sangat berat. Kalau anak-anak enggak taat, kalau ambil keputusan yang enggak baik, kalau lagi masalah di dalam rumah tangga, aduh, tajam. Ya. Apalagi cuma hidup sekarang, capek ya. Capek hidup di dunia ini. Harus kejar ini, kejar ini, dan apalagi ada orang, orang selalu rusak. Oleh karena itu, ya sering sekali ada pengalaman dengan orang yang juga jelek. Right? Like we can go through looking at one thorn after another of health problems, of emotional and mental problems, of relational problems. I mean, we have to deal with people. You can't run away from people, and people are broken. So when you deal with broken people, guess what you get? Broken relationships. But you still have to deal with them. And, and far too often, whenever we see something difficult, we say, ah, Tolong ambil Tuhan. Just take it, God. 
But what if God just wants to say, hey, percaya aja. Just trust me. Kasi kariya ko cukup. My grace is enough. Nanti, waktu you lebih lemah, later when you are more weak, baru menemukan kepasan ko. There you're going to find my power. You haven't found it yet. Karena kamu masih menggunakan kekuasaanmu. Belum sampai kekuasaan ku. And far too often, we rely on our own strength and we actually never get to God's strength. So as we close, I want you to think through these questions. Dengan bunga mawar, yang memang harus tahu, harus kasih yang bagus sama yang ini. Kalau kita cuma fokus sama duri, kita nggak melihat bunga. Right, like if we just focus on the bad things in life, you actually miss out on the good things in life. Walaupun kehidupan ini bisa jelek, dunia ini bisa hancur. Kalau you mencari anak Allah, you selalu punya Allah. Right, like if everything's falling apart, if the world is destroyed, if your life is falling apart, if you are a child of God, the one thing that you have is actually the most beautiful thing in life. You always have God. That's it. It doesn't get more beautiful than that. And we learn from Paul this sort of process that I hope could encourage us as we go throughout life and as we face challenges. Yang kita lihat yang Paulus lakukan waktu dia menghadapi atau mengalami tantangan dan sulitan. Yang pertama dia berdoa, right? The first thing he did was pray, but then dia mendengar. Then he listened. And then God spoke. Dan waktu Tuhan menjawab, Dia ingat siapa Tuhan ku yang selalu setia, yang maha kuasa, yang maha esa, yang maha tahu, yang maha segala sesuatu. When God who is, is all-knowing and all-powerful and all-present, He will never leave you. He is everything that you need. This God is who my God is. Lalu dia ingat siapakah Tuhan dia. Dan setelah itu, dia menerima. He accepted what God said. Dan dia dapat belajar. Walaupun mulai dengan Tuhan tolong ambil dore ini, even though he started with saying, God, take this storm with me, akhirnya dia senang ada dore ini. He was happy that he had those thorns because of what it would do to him and what it would do to his faith. Supaya dia belajar dan dia bisa maju dan melayani dan bertumbuh. So he could keep going, moving ahead and growing because that's what thorns do. That's what difficulties do. Saya jarang sekali bertumbuh waktu lagi berlibur. Right? Like, I don't grow when I go on vacation. Pengalaman yang indah. Yeah. Ada laut, air hangat, ada minuman. Right? When we're close by the beach, I mean, go on vacation. I'm not saying don't go on vacation. <laughs> if you go on vacation, jangan lupa pendeta-pendeta ku. Right? Right? <laughs> But what I'm saying is when life is easy, I don't know about you, I don't really grow. I don't. Tapi waktu kehidupan menjadi susah, baru saya bertumbuh. Kalau saya bersandar sama Tuhan. So on the hard moments of life, if I really lean on God, that's where my faith grows. And then sebenarnya, iman yang bertumbuh kuat, jauh lebih indah daripada pengalaman seperti bunga mawar. So really, a faith that grows is far more beautiful than the most beautiful flower ever could be. Because it changes who you are. And you have enough in life to help you become like Jesus. It's just taking Paul's lessons and applying them. So, mari kita berdoa bersama-sama. Let me close our time in prayer together. Allah Bapa kami, walaupun kami tidak menikmati, Tantangan dan kesulitan di dalam kehidupan ini. Kami tahu kalau kami realis, kalau kami jujur, selalu akan ada hal yang sulit. God, even though we don't like challenges, we don't like difficulties, uh, we know if we're being realistic, if we're honest, that life is full of hard times. Secara jasman, sebagai manusia saya jauh lebih suka Hal-hal yang, yang enak, yang indah, 
Saya tidak begitu suka saat yang saya berduka atau orang lain berduka hal yang tidak enak, hal yang tidak muda. God, just as a human speaking, I know, I know I don't like the times that are difficult, that are hard, that are, can even be painful. Tetapi saya juga sadar Tuhan, saya kurang bertumbuh tanpa kesulitan. I know God that I don't grow, we don't grow, unless we have challenges in life. Lalu saya berdoa supaya kami dapat belajar dari firmanmu dan pengalaman Rasul Paulus. Bagaimana sebaiknya kita menghadapi kesulitan-kesulitan dalam kehidupan ini. So I just pray God that we'll learn from your word and from the life of Paul about how we should respond to the challenges of life. Supaya kami tidak hilang kesempatan untuk melihat keindahan hubungan dengan Engkau. So that we don't miss the opportunity to see the beauty in a relationship with you as we grow closer to you as your children. Kami berdoa dalam nama Tuhan kami. Amen. of our commitment to keeping God's word in our lives. Jesus, Job, and our beautiful.
Tiba saatnya kita akan memberikan uh, persembahan syukur kita kepada Tuhan Saya mulai dari tugas Maju ke depan Let us come and bring our offering of thanksgiving to Jesus Our Lord and Shepherd Who has blessed us and provided for all our needs So kita kesediaan Ibu Melanie untuk berdoa terlebih dahulu
Thank you, Sir Stacy. Beautiful song, beautiful voice. Mari kita akhiri ibadah kita pada hari ini. Silakan bangkit berdiri. Bila roh Allah ada di dalamku, bukan menari seperti daun menari. Mari kita nyanyikan berjalan. From now on, until we see Him face to face in heaven above. Amen.
depan diadakan uh, perjamuan kudus Mari kita semua mempersiapkan hati dan pikiran kita Untuk uh, bersatu dengan tubuh dan darah Kristus minggu depan uh, Latihan padon suara dan angklung diadakan sebentar siang setelah ibadah uh, Gereja menyampaikan turut belasung kawa kepada keluarga besar uh, Hermawan Atas kepergian mulia uh, Mama dari A dan Hans Kakak dari uh, G, uh, Jenny Jenna dan Cici Prah Hermawan Bapak Ipah dari Lina, uh, Tante dari Nabi Stensi dari Lia, serta Great Art dari uh, Zoe Pada hari Jumat, dua hari yang lalu, tanggal 25 Agustus Doa kami untuk seluruh keluarga yang berbuka Kiranya kekuatan dan penghiburan diberikan oleh Tuhan Yang keempat berita sukacita Kami ucapkan selamat kepada Bapak Hendra dan Ibu Lina Atas kelahiran cucu yang ketiga Lovely pada hari Selasa 22 Agustus ya. Dan Logan bertumbuh besar menjadi anak Tuhan yang setia Serta sayang kalkong dan ramah Terima kasih bagi mereka yang sudah ambil bagian dalam pelayanan hari ini uh, Khususnya untuk Tommy Yang baru pertama kali Thank you Tuhan memberkati uh, Apakah ada yang baru pertama kali beribadah dengan kita? Di sebelah sini, we would like to welcome those who just uh, um, maybe visitor here. Tidak ada? Di sini ada? Tidak ada? Tidak ada. Oke, okay. inventaris selama. <laughs> Oke, okay, selamat ulang tahun. Oh, sorry. Uh, tanggal 2 September, hari Sabtu yang akan datang, jam 11 pagi, ada persekutuan di rumah Ibu Gladys. Nanti alamat mungkin disampaikan berikutnya. Ya? Di WA, nanti akan disampaikan di WA ya, jam 11 pagi hari Sabtu ini uh, Yang kedua ada makanan yang untuk uh, fundraising retreat Yang sudah PO, silahkan diambil di court ya, di depan Dan ada snack juga, ada uh, kue di Kaambon ya, Silahkan kumpulin dan membantu uh, dana Thanksgiving kita Thanksgiving retreat Mari kita berdoa Oh, oh sorry, Dokte yang pertama, Ibu Pampa Selamat berkuat dengan Agustus Yang kedua, Brian Sampaikan Sapa Harun Yang ketiga, Rosie Grossman Selamat berkuat Indria Selamat berkuat dengan Bapak Sembilan Bapak Colin Selamat berkuat Tante Susi Aisyah, Aidi Jaya, Tanggal Dua dan Bapak Hengki, tanggal 2 September Sudah? Sudah Oke, mari kita berdoa Bapak di surga, terima kasih untuk firmanmu yang sudah kau sampaikan kepada kami melalui hambamu Terima kasih atas uh, persekutuan yang manis ini Kiranya engkau boleh disenangkan, kiranya namamu dipermuliakan Tuhan sebentar kami akan makan dan minum Engkau berkati persekutuan kami di meja makan Berkati pembicaraan kami Kau satukan kami dengan kasihmu Di dalam nama Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa dan mengucap syukur Amin, Amin.